Hey guys, no zoo for you here, and today we're going to talk about premium ships. One day I'll be able to afford Dasha Perova to come out here and do these, but until then, you're stuck with me. So, when I say premium ships, what am I talking about? You might have heard by now, but there are a lot of premium ships being introduced to the tech tree. That's awesome! This includes ships that you've been waiting for for a long time, turpits included. So what ships are being added to the tech tree? Well, you've got Texas, Tachi Banana, Tachi, Tachi Banana, whatever you, how, however you want to pronounce it, uh, Diana, Emden, Campbelltown, Warspite, Molotov, Kutuzov, and Bluskovica, or the Bliss for short. So, these are going to be able to be purchased by doubloons. Now, the prices are probably going to be very similar to what you would find them on the open market. So, just convert dollars to doubloons and that will give you an idea. What I'm going to do is give you a rundown of what I think beginners should purchase, average players, and above average players. I'm not going to get too far into the weeds with stats for the ships. I'm just going to give you a high level overview of what I think you should get and why. So we're going to start with the beginner ships. Now the beginner ships, or what I classify as the beginner ships, are going to be the touchy banana, that's what I'm going to call it for now because I don't want to butcher the Japanese language, Diana, Emden, and Campbelltown. Those are four of them. Now, should you buy these? Well, that depends. If you're a beginner that's content on playing tiers one through three and you have no desire to go any further, sure. They're each decent ships. I mean, they're nothing special. They're nothing spectacular. Campbelltown does have the ability to sell fire. Uh, Emden is basically a Dresden. It's slightly better, so you might enjoy that. There's one other beginner ship, though, that I feel is a must-buy, and that's the Texas. We all know Texas has already been in the premium shop, it's already been taken off, but again, it's going to be back in the tech tree. Texas is a must-buy, and it's an excellent battleship for beginners. It's basically a New York, it's got great AA, can tank damage. For the beginner out there that kind of wants to step up their game, I think that Texas is definitely right up your alley. So out of all those ships, Texas is going to be the best bet. Right around $25, convert that to the balloons, there you have it. Excellent buy. If you didn't get the Texas first go around and you want to get it as a premium, I would definitely jump on that when it's introduced to the tech tree. Now, for the average player, and by average I mean you've got a decent win rate, you know, you're in that 50 to 55% win rate era uh, area, I would say that the War Spite is the best average battleship to pick up. Um, actually, that's the only one that I've listed in there for the average player right now. So you've got the beginners, and you've got the average, which is the War Spite. Definitely pick this wonderful Royal Navy ship up. It's been gone for a long time. It has not been available, and I know a lot of people have wanted to pick that up in North America. So the War Spite's unique. It replenishes its damage when you heal a little, a little bit better than the other battleships. It's a lot of fun. Little short range though, uh, not quite as far as uh, comparable ships like the New Mexico, but for the average player, I think it's a great battleship. Not as easy to get to into the tech as the Texas is because of that. Um, you know, you've got that uniqueness and that the range just kind of affects it. So you got to play a little smarter. But for the average player out there, I would definitely go with the War Spite. Now, for the above average player, um, these are your uh, players that are probably around 55 percent win rate and above. I would go with the Molotov, Kutuzov, and Wuskovica. Now out of those, um, my must purchase is going to be the Kutuzov. And, uh, and again, forgive me, my Russian is a little rusty, as in I've never practiced the language at all. Um, so there you have it. But out of those three ships, I would go with the Mickey, as I will call it. Um, Reason why I would choose that over the Molotov is that the Molotov is a very unique ship in that you've got some great guns on it. You've got Dmitry Donskoy guns on it. You know, that's tier 9 guns on a tier 6 ship, but you've still got tier 6 armor, and that's really not the best thing. It keeps you on your toes. That's why I also recommend that for the above average player. Um, if you're a beginner or an average player trying to jump into the Molotov, and you're not alert, you're gonna get destroyed very easily because of your citadels. Um, you really have to pay attention and play on your toes. Uh, the Mickey is the same deal, except you've got a better burn rate, you've got much more range at almost 19 kilometers, and the ship is a dual threat. Uh, you've got AP that can just absolutely hammer cruisers up close, 
you can absolutely destroy them. Uh, HE, you can rain fire from above on battleships, you know, out to 19 kilometers. That's an awesome thing to have. So if you're thinking about the Molotov, I would really suggest paying just a few dollars more, or doubloons as it is, to get the Katusov. Um, great ship, probably one of my favorites, and uh, controversially, I will say that it is probably one of the best ships in the game, if not the best ship, just for the multiple uh, roles that it can play. Wuskavitsa is a fun little destroyer, but again, uh, if an average player is out there trying to take it, it's, it's kind of <laughs> finicky. Um, your range isn't the best on the torpedoes. Again, it maxes out at about eight kilometers. Guns are really good. The guns are fun. Definitely a gunboat. Um, it's Polish, built by the British. Um, absolutely fun in that respect. You can go out. You do have some stealth fire capability later, later on, but again, uh, in the hands of a beginner or an average player, it's, it's just not going to be used to its full potential. So out of those three ships, the must-buy for me is the Mickey. I would put the Molotov second. You know, pick that up if you want a tier six ship just to mess around in, have fun in. Um, it'll serve you well. Um, you know, it's a great ship. But yeah, Mickey for sure. Now you might realize that I have not brought up the tear pits. Turpits, tear pits, I've heard both ways. I think the actual pronunciation is tear pits, so we'll go with that. Tear pits, in my opinion, is kind of an average to above average player type of ship. Um, really, really great battleship. If you haven't picked it up yet and you're thinking about it, definitely splurge on it. It's going to be expensive doubloon-wise, but there's a reason for that. I mean, it's a battleship with torpedoes. For me, that is the above all must buy out of all the ships there if you didn't pick it up and you're willing to spend for it. Now, why do I think it's an average to above average player type of ship, kind of in the middle? Well, in the hands of an above average player, the tear pits is going to absolutely devastate the enemy. Um, and an average player is going to be able to jump right into it and actually do pretty good. The problem with the tier pits is that it's going to get up tiered and you're going to find yourself in tier 10 matches every now and then. So for the average player, they might not want that. Um, that that's a pretty bitter pill to swallow if you're looking to jump in and just have some casual fun with tier 8 and all of a sudden you're playing against multiple Yamatos and Iowas and Montanas, Shimikazes. Um, so that's why I'm going to say it's kind of that in-between area. Uh, it's, it's good for the average player. An average player can do really decent in it, but I feel that for an average player they could get overwhelmed if they get up-tiered into these battles and they're not prepared for it or don't want it. So there you have it. Th those are my suggestions. So the must-buys out of them are the Texas, War Spite, the Mickey, and the Tear Pits. The rest of the ships, if you're a ship collector, by all means go after them. I know I am. I love ships. I love having them in my port. Uh, some of the ships I've played a lot. Some of them I haven't. I've got Campbelltown. Uh, I really haven't played that a lot. Uh, tier 3 gameplay is just not my thing anymore. Uh, if I'm reviewing a ship, I'll go down there. And every now and then I'll have fun. And I know a lot of missions pop up. So it's always good to have a ship. The thing about the Campbelltown is that you might want it for training captains for when the RN line eventually does come out. Warspite, again, you know, just a very historic ship. Texas, historic ship. Both of those ships were around in World War I. They served well in World War II. So you can think about picking those up for sure. And then the Mickey, again, I think is one of the best ships in the game. Um, skip over the Molotov. Pick up the Mickey if you're an above average player. Or pick up both if you have the doubloons or extra, extra cash laying around. Um, and there you have it. Those are your premium ships added to the tech tree here at some point in the near future. We don't know exactly when. We know they're coming. Something really to look forward to. I know a lot of players have been missing out on these ships, especially in North America. They've come up for sale overseas a lot. We felt kind of left out, but Wargaming is doing some great things for us. This, no doubt, is an awesome thing, so I'm looking forward to seeing more of these ships out on the ocean, and you all should be looking forward to that as well, because there's a lot of great ships here. So, anyhow, guys, thanks for watching. This has been No Zoot for you. Stay tuned for more 
wonderful videos. I'll, I'll call my own videos wonderful. Um, anyhow, uh, we've got a Help and Ensign series, and we've also got Real Warship Genius, which is by far one of my favorite to produce. I'll get one of those at some point in the near future. So, again, thanks for watching, guys, and I am out.